Okay guys, welcome back. We're gonna try again. We're just gonna wait for Sunet to hopefully this time log on and get it right. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of, you know, old school technology glitches. But guys, again, I am looking forward to chatting to the phenomenal Sunet Phil Yoon on this episode. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. Like I said, being an athlete, she has been one of my role models in track and field, you know, and um, I'm so excited to speak to her and she is requesting. So yeah, it's gonna work now. There we go. Let's just see if this goes on. So net volume. Hello, Lisa. How are you? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, 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 so sorry. I'm still old school. I didn't know I had to update and do all that things. I'm so sorry, my dearie. How are you? I'm good with you. It's okay. It's okay. We're happy to finally have you on Back Your Girl with Backtrack. Thank you for speaking to us tonight. Oh, no. Thank you so much for hosting me. You wouldn't believe last time when uh, Timba also tried to phone me, I also had internet issues and it was crazy but i'm just finally happy i can <laughs> i can speak to you thank you for having me it's okay to never but thank you for making the effort i know it's a you know old school don't really understand these technology things so it's fine it's fine we understand <laughs> <laughs> oh no so 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 sorry so sorry yes see i just wanted to get everything ready for you and all my medals and I lost my some of my medals. I don't know where <laughs> where some of my medals are. So I I think I have the most important ones for you. It's crazy. You have so many that you even lost a few. That is <laughs> insane. <laughs> yes. But Sunet, I just want to first introduce you to everybody that has logged on to watch this live, guys. This is Sunet for you, the one and only. Amazing, <laughs> phenomenal, superwoman, javelin thrower in South Africa. So I'm going to just take you guys through a few of Sunet's accolades, guys. It's absolutely crazy. This woman has medals for days. So I'm going to take you through a few. <laughs> she is the Rio Olympic silver medalist in the javelin. Must she I show them? Is... Must I show them to you? No, 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 no. Don't show them. Don't show them yet. We're going to show them. We're going to show them. We're going to show okay, them. Okay. Let, me, let me take them through it first. So she is the Rio Olympic silver medalist. She's two-time Commonwealth gold medalist, silver medalist at the Commonwealth Games, bronze medal at the Commonwealth Games. She has won a silver medal at the World Champs, a bronze medal at the World Champs, two times Africa, all Africa Games bronze medalist, five times gold medalist at the African Games, Continental Cup gold medalist and silver medalist. And I haven't even gone through <laughs> all of them. How? <laughs> How? Oh, yes, yeah. Um, I must tell you, it is just I have this unbelievable passion and drive in my heart. And I have this dream in my heart to be just the best in the world. And I know what my capabilities are. And uh, I just, the, the most important thing for me is I enjoy to throw that javelin. There's nothing more um, amazing for me to see that thing fly. Um, I had a few injuries the last couple of years, but that is part of javelin throwing, uh, mostly in my lower back. But uh, as long as I enjoy my athletics, what I do every day, I enjoy to go out and train every day to see how strong I can get, how further I can throw. I just have this unbelievable fire in my heart that is not mm -hmm. burned out yet. And that is why I keep fighting every year. Every year I set goals for myself that I want to reach. And that is important for me to, to, to reach my goals. I have very high standards for myself. And um, I just enjoy, enjoy my athletics. And uh, so many people ask me, what is next? So next is the, is the Tokyo Olympic Games and the big qualification that is lying ahead of me, training immensely hard towards that. Um, this year, our qualification is 64 meters, which is a little bit higher than normal. Um, but my training program is adapted to, to, to throw that distance when, when we need it. That's amazing. And you speak about this fire and this passion that you have in you just to throw the javelin. You know, it's, it's what you <laughs> love, it's what you eat, it's what you breathe every day. Tell us, when did this start? Well, um, <laughs> it actually started in, in grade eight. Uh, where my where my uh, coach back in high school called me 
And he told me I must come, come and throw the javelin because I've been a very good cricketer my whole year, mm -hmm. uh, my whole life. And um, I, I played cricket for South Africa from a very young age. So I always had the ability to throw a ball very far. And I was very sporty and um, can do basically all sports that you can <laughs> that you can think of. But the one was the javelin. And uh, I, at first, I didn't get it right. In grade mm -hmm. eight, the javelin hit me behind my head. And I said, no, I'm not going to try it again. So grade 10, I tried again. And he always called me uh, Filyun. So he said, Filyun, come here. You must try and throw the javelin. So I went up to him and he said, throw it. And I just basically, I took a few steps. I took five strides. And mm -hmm. I threw, I think, 32 meters already. And I threw the first in the school. And that's how I became a, a javelin thrower. And that year, I won the national championships. Um, I went from 28 meters to, to my first national title was 43.82. That is what I won in Pretoria in uh, 1999. And from oh. there, I just went on and I got a bursary from the Northwest University um, where I studied. Um, yeah, as they say, the rest is history. That is amazing. And obviously, you speak about your first time winning um, a national title. How many national titles have you won? <laughs> well, it's a, that is a good question. It is something that I'm very, very proud of. And it's something that I don't actually like to lose. But this year, Yuan had a very good throw at national championships and she won with uh, 59. And um, I think at this stage, I am on 14, 14, 14. national titles. Yeah, what 14 the going on 15. Oh, well, I think if I think I just want to win it back uh, next year, I will. I want to fin finish my career off as a South African champ. And uh, that is what I want to do. And it's something I didn't get this year, but I still very pr I'm very proud of my silver that I got. Um, and um, yeah, so I think it's 40 national titles and about eight national student titles. That is amazing. I mean, you have a CV that, you know, I can't even <laughs> comprehend when I read it. I am so in awe of your achievements. It's crazy. Oh, thank you so very much. <laughs> and I mean, it's also good to see, like you said, this year you never won a national title, but it's good to see that we have youngsters coming through. You know, we have youngsters mm. coming through competing against someone of your caliber and obviously getting a national title. And um, how do you see them developing or, or taking um, over from you in the future? Yeah, it's, I, enjoy, I enjoy to compete with them. But mm. uh, as I know myself, I'm very, very competitive. <laughs> so I don't, like, I don't like to lose on a bad way. So that has mm -hmm. always been it's part of me. And that, but that is something that you have to learn throughout your career to, to enjoy, um, to, to know that you can also lose along the way that learns you so much character and a lot of things. But... Yeah, I'm very, very um, excited about the future of the South African javelin throwers. I think there's a lot of talent that is coming through um, in your and I and I see Jana van Skalkveig. So there's a lot of people that I that I can see who is also enjoying javelin throwing. But as you will know, Alicia, it is also uh, an individual kind of sport, and that sport is not for everyone. And there's more disappointments than victory and being a professional athlete is very 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 hard and i think mm -hmm. sometimes the people don't know how hard it is to be an international athlete and to to compete on a, on a highest level and to stay mm -hmm. on that level that is even more harder and um being an athlete you know the we there's such a lack of financial support in in being an, a, an athlete Mm -hmm. And that is, as I said earlier, it's, it's literally the fire that I have and the love for athletics that has been, been the driving force behind all my medals and the enjoyment that I get out of athletics. So the, the youngsters must know it is tough. It is tough. If, if I have to think back when I was 19, 20, um, how difficult it was, you know, to get to Europe and all the things you're experiencing going there. And, uh, yeah, athletics is difficult to make a, a profession out of it. There's a lot of athletes that stop um, because they can't make a living. And that's the reality of being an athlete in South Africa. 
you don't get you don't get big salaries um, and being a woman is also difficult to get sponsorships that is also the reality um, mm. and, and it's hard so you have to work double as hard to get recognized and to get sponsorships why do you think it's it's tough for women or female athletes to get decent sponsorships or good financial sponsorships um, especially within South Africa and Africa yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I don't know what is the what is the problem, and I don't know why people doesn't want to invest in in us as girls, us as women. We are just as good. We just work as hard as as our fellow um, countrymen, and we also make sacrifices, and we also train the flesh out of our hands every single day. Um, and it's tough. It's just tough. And we also have the same compliment. I compliment just a lot of our male um, counterparts, but I, do, I just don't know why females overall are struggling to get to get sponsorship. I just wish it wants to change and that we can have more support, more backing, more believing in our talents and our capabilities because being a woman, we are strong. You know, we have a lot of fire, we have drive and um, like the Olympics coming up uh, being a woman, I, I like to be in the front line fighting for South Africa and doing well in the javelin again. That is what I like. But that's mm -hmm. the reality. A reality, as I said earlier, it's just difficult to get sponsorships. Do you think that it's a personal branding issue from us as women mm -hmm. in South Africa? Do you think that we need to, I don't know, put ourselves out there a little bit more? Do we need to um, make ourselves, you know, vulnerable to the marketing um, mm. industry in South Africa or do you, because I mean I don't think that our achievements and our sports is enough, mm -hmm. I think that maybe it comes yeah. from a personal branding point of view and, and that is what we need to work on and change and teach the youth to personally brand themselves in a better way so that people can recognize mm. them do you agree with me or no? Yeah, I think um, like myself um, luckily well I established a good name in athletics so the people know me. So when I get to um, along people to speak to them, I, I try really to go out of my way to, to be friendly and to be open um, because I'm doing an individual kind of sport. I'm not always um, get the, the opportunity to be amongst people. So when I get the mm. chance, I always talk a little bit too much. <laughs> but that is just the, the, the brand that I am. People know me as a very spontaneous person. Although I'm doing javelin, um, all, everyone always say, oh, Sinead, you're so much smaller in, in the real life. <laughs> you're not so big as I think you were. You're so friendly because I think I do a, a, a warrior um, event. Like when I, when I met Lee Marie as well, my, my partner, now my wife, she said, um, well, she always saw, my, saw me on television and I looked always big and now I'm just a small, actually small girl. But yeah, it is, it is difficult because it is not like we are in a big country like Australia and in England who have the money to invest in women's sports and go professionally mm -hmm. like a lot of sports. They get mm -hmm. contracts, they get paid. Um, so I really hope in athletics it will change. Yeah. Um, but you can't compare uh, A.B. de Villiers and Sia Kulisi to a Sunet It's not. It's not the same. I also have a personal brand. Well, I think so, but not as enormous as, as the rest of the uh, a Springbok or Pritia player or, or whatever. Uh, any cricketer, any rugby yeah. player, any soccer player can walk into a shop any player can walk into wherever and they will get a sponsorship. Um, you don't even have to be on national level. You can be on provincial level and the people will help you. So yeah. I feel almost sometimes a woman have to beg. A woman have to plea to, to be helped and to be seen and to be heard. And I wish that could change. I hope that answers your question. No, it definitely does answer my question. And I think that it's important for us to speak about this as women. Mm -hmm. It's important for us to make it known that you know, we work really hard and all that we want to do is mm. achieve in our career. All that we want to do, like you, all you want to do is achieve a gold medal at the Tokyo Olympics. And that is yes. what you need to focus on. <laughs> you don't need to focus on, you know, everything else. You need to focus on your training. You need to focus on your preparation. You need to be able to go yeah. there healthy, mentally ready to go and, yeah. you know, win that gold medal for us as a country. And we should, <laughs> thank you and we should be proud of you. So, yeah, it's something that's very close to my heart. And 
something that mm. I hope us as um, you know the senior athletes mm. can can help the juniors and youth yeah. coming up. Um, and I know you faced a lot of challenges in, in that mm. regard. And how do you keep yourself motivated and on that path to still train, no. to still compete, <laughs> even though you've, you've faced like mountains? How do you keep yourself yeah. motivated? Yeah, Alisa, I must tell you, that is, that is a question that I get a lot. And that is, mm. uh, luckily, with Limari by my side, I'm so absolutely blessed with her. You know, she, the encouragement and the support I get from her. Um, luckily, well, she's also struggling a little bit now with also with her finances and with COVID, but she supported me a lot and just said, she asks me every morning, what is your drive? Why do you get up? Why do you train? You have so many obstacles. You have so many diversity. You have so many challenges. Then I just keep telling her, I know what I know, what I know, and I will not stop until I get what I want. <laughs> and she said, it is just unbelievable to live with someone of so much fire and a huge mm. appetite. <laughs> but that's besides. Um, but yeah, so sometimes you must not be defined by your circumstances. You always have a choice. Um, how are you going to react? Um, what are you going to do about it? And Yeah, you can, I can sit back now and say, well, I don't have any finances. Well, I don't have any sponsors. But, <laughs> yes, <Lee Marie. laughs> but um, yeah, that is, this is a, a God-given talent. And I know mm -hmm. the difference that I can make with it to, to show people no matter what, no matter what mm -hmm. comes over your road, and no matter how hard it is, if you have mm -hmm. to believe, You can, you can accomplish everything. But I must tell you, it is not, it is not easy. Um, mm. But if I know if I fulfill my dream that I have in my heart, then everything will change. You know, yeah. to get an Olympic gold medal around your neck, it doesn't sit in everyone's pants. And the, the amount yeah. of work that has to go in there to go mm. and win a, an Olympic title and to be called the Olympic champion. That has been my lifelong dream um, yeah. to be that Olympic champion. And if I think how much I've trained already and how much I've put in already, and at the end of the day, you can just pray and yeah. let go and let go. There's nothing else that you can do. If you know you've mm. trained to the best of your capabilities, but that's what I like. <laughs> to stand there with the world's eyes on you to have that yeah. BMT and to show them what you are made of and to show them what you have and to show them you don't fear anything or you don't fear yeah. anyone. Yeah, so I like it. <laughs> When yeah. you speak, you give me goosebumps and I'm like, that Olympic gold medal <laughs> moment. Oh, Sunil, I can't wait to watch you achieve that. Yeah, and sure, just speaking cool. about that, we know that that is what you're hungry for. We know that that is what you want and that's your biggest goal, you know, that you haven't achieved. Mm -hmm. um, how is that preparation? How is the road to Tokyo going? How's the journey going so far? Well, um, training-wise, it's going superbly. I'm on a new training program, um, which, I, with, which I started to train on um, end of April, beginning of May. So I say a bit less up. So there's, there's, there's my ties hard. Um, but I get challenged now in all different muscle groups. I'm very strong now. Um, a lot of faster, explosive. Um, so I'm looking forward to see where the javelin is going to land as soon as I'm through all my training program. Um, I'm throwing next week, Saturday, in, in Pretoria on the 29th. Okay. Um, for now, I'm going to stay in South Africa. I think uh, emotionally-wise, it's a little bit better to stay now here. Um, Athletic South Africa, they did send an email out saying that the Olympic athletes leading towards Tokyo can get uh, vaccinated soon. So I'm not sure how that is going to um, make a difference traveling to Europe. South Africa is in so many banned lists still. Um, but for now, I'm going to throw a few meets in, in South Africa and then um, going to the African championships and then maybe to Europe. But I will miss, you see, I will miss the, the people of Tokyo, the, the, the people cheering, the spectators. You yeah. see, Alicia, I think that is 
to be for every athlete around the world that is going to be the biggest challenge um to throw without spectators you know there will probably be a chance that there will be no spectators um in the in the national stadium so that is something you will have to prepare yourself mentally maybe i must mm -hmm. psych myself up <laughs> i don't know yeah don't know. everyone is in the same I mean, boat yeah that's true that's the thing that we have to realize that everyone is mm. going to be you know dealing with the same conditions in the same boat mm. um mm. but like yeah you said it's, it's all about a mental game and i think that i mean you've been through so much already you know you've you've thrown at every stage um in this in this world and in athletics so i think that mentally you're mm -hmm. fine you're ready you're going to be good but on that question standing at the big game. game five you're my fifth Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I will make and I, mean, I will make some African history. I don't think there's there's any South African athlete, male or female, who have done five Olympic Games. Twenty years. <laughs> Only yeah. the Napoleon. <laughs> <laughs> That is crazy, crazy achievement. No, I want to ask you. Beijing, London, Rio, and then Tokyo. Amazing. And you obviously Tokyo is your last one, right? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> yeah, no, I think so. Real realistic wise, this is it. This is now mm. and this is my chance um mm. to to go full out for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we back you 100% all of us and we're going to be rooting for you. I have a oh, question for you. you. So, you at the Olympic Games 2016 mm -hmm. at the Rio Olympic Games and You know, obviously you you're throwing and you know you are a medal contender. You know yeah. you're a medal contender. You know at the end of this you are going to stand on the podium and you're going to get the silver medal put around yes, your neck. Yes, my jacket is going to your mind. <laughs> yes, trumpy. <laughs> hey, trumpy. <laughs> well, Alisa, I must I must tell you that was one of the competitions I probably prayed the hardest. Why I tell you this is because I went into the London Olympic Games as world number one. Um, I had a lot of expectations from the country itself that I will win Olympic gold. I went into the London Olympic Games as world number one. So I think there was a lot of pressure on myself. I put a lot of pressure on myself. But mm -hmm. the growth that I uh, undergo, underwent, about, I'm not sure what's the English word, right? English word. But the message that I want to say is, so the... the Four years passed from London to Rio, and then I had a choice. You know, do I give up or do I fight another four years? So we came into the Rio final, and it was so close. Oh, my goodness. And why I prayed so hard is because I lost the bronze medal in the London Olympics in the last round to the German mm. thrower. In the Rio Olympics, I was in front till the fifth round. So I thought, oh, my goodness, I'm going to be the Olympic champion. This is it. Yeah. And then the creation came on a last throw, and I moved down to second. So I just said, please don't let it happen again. And we were literally divided by the centimeters. We were seven through 64 and further. So, but when the, that feeling when you know, you, you tick them off like, okay, Well, first one is finished. Okay, the second one is finished. <laughs> Now there's only four more pros, three more pros. And then when you hit that third one, and you just know your Olympic medalist is, it is the feeling you can't describe because I lost it in London. And then I yeah. came back and won the silver in Rio. And my, do you want to see it? Yes, show us. Now is the time. <laughs> Please show us the medal. <laughs> Yay. Here it is. Dang. You that know what? The Rio Olympic medal. Oh my god. <laughs> and you know what? When I now you can see it nicely, which makes this one nice and very special. You will see it is not totally flat, so it has a little bit of a bump and underneath mm -hmm. says athletic women's javelin throw, but this medal is 500 grams. Yeah, it's very very heavy. When I so yeah. when I when I went to receive it, 
Hy, ek voel net, yes, my die ding is zwaar hoor. <laughs> hy spreek het zwaar, maar yes, I'm so It's proud of this model. A swarm of that yeah. is the, the real deal. Yeah, so, oh, yeah I swore it very easy. <laughs> so this is, and, and so many, so few people, if you take in consideration mm. how many people are there in the world can say that they have an Olympic medal. And so, Limari always tell me, hey, you are Olympic silver medalist for four years, but actually now I'm for, I'm for five years. I'm the Olympic yeah, silver medalist. Least- <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so that is oh this God. is my this is the most special one in my medal collection i have i have a few yet <laughs> next to me but um Please take us through show yeah. us show us your okay. show us yeah. your top five no, for sure. yeah so my first um international medal that i got um was in melbourne in 2006 in the commonwealth games so that was the first one that I won, which this one makes very special is the the type of chain. You see, it's mm-hmm. not like a normal, yeah. like the, um, a ribbon. So here is like a golden chain, which makes it very special with the Commonwealth um, thingy there at the back. And which mm-hmm. also this makes it special. So our dog is bark. <laughs> it says um, and with the date and the distance of that of that championships. So that is a lot. Then I have my Delhi Commonwealth Games, the second the second gold, where oh, I defended yeah. my <laughs> gold again, where I defended my Commonwealth title in Delhi. But I must tell mm-hmm. you, if it's championships that has so many stories that goes with it and what you have as it leads and all the things that you have seen it and believe it. So, mm-hmm. I, I, um, in 2011, I upgraded from World Championships bronze to mm-hmm. silver because Russian yeah. that I competed against. So, it's a great risk. Yes, so. So, it's a great spear. But I always knew something something was up. So something she had to go. Up, yeah. oh, so this is also a big one. This is the World Championships mm-hmm. medal from from Daegu 2011. That's so I had special. to 68 for bronze that yeah. night. Yeah, so that was one of the nicest competitions to be part of because for talk about the chick, yes, yeah, see, that is, a, that is a competition for, for another day. She threw, she threw 70, 71, 74. Mm-hmm. I still remember, I get goosebumps every time I watch that video. The commentator said, surely, surely, this has to be enough. Yeah, now, Lisa, I risk on me. That Russian came, she took the hardest javelin. And so it's too much for me. She won with 71.99. And she sure. came and she took this. <laughs> yeah, and then she tasted positive. So yeah, yeah. The, the other ones I can. Is he going to win? I said that he is going to win. Yeah, that is good. So I can feel another one. This is my Glasgow. This is also this was the Glasgow silver. Yeah. From Glasgow, the Commonwealth Games. Mm-hmm. So that is also one. I still my other bronze, the, my other bronze one that I'm looking for is somewhere here. I I hope I find it. Um, yeah, that is the one I won it. One in the Gold Coast. So I'm also the, I mean, the guys, first. Say so so again. Suneta has so many medals. She even loses her medal. Come on, <laughs> that is that, yeah, that's so mind boggling, honestly. Yeah, now you say so much, but don't cry over it. It's not. My second, my errands. Yeah, so that is the first time um, I think also South African athlete won four consecutive um, com- Commonwealth Game medals mm-hmm. after each other. So I won two times the gold, then in Glasgow the silver, and then in mm-hmm. Australia the bronze. Yeah. So uh, that Absolutely is my yeah, Very, very, very proud. You should be. <laughs> you should be. So yeah. basically, the only medal that you have missing out of your collection is the Olympic gold. Exactly. 
Exactly. That mm -hmm. is something I I wanted for so long, really, mm. in all my mm. collection. I have two world championships, student gold medals. I have five or five or six times African champion, um, and then my Commonwealth game medalist. I came also very, very close at the world championships in, in Beijing in 2015, where I was mm. always also in the first position. Mm. And then in the last row, the China Gold game, I moved to second. Yeah, too many dates are not going to skype it off. You end up at third. So I found first and not third to right. And that is what speaks for like so yeah. Yes, see. And you know, what makes it very challenging is you have to keep focusing or keep mm. focused for an hour almost. And that is mm. what is very challenging at the World Championships, at the Olympic Games, at the Commonwealth Games. It is not like you have run 100, 200 and you're finished. So, mm -hmm. and we have to focus as well with all the, the track events that's coming around. You make ready to throw and the next moment you get a flag to say you have mm. to wait. So, yeah, so that, you see, I say, I said, dark cloud deal, you know, you're tired because you're just emotionally yeah. tired because you have to can concentrate for so long. Yeah. And what's your, what's your favorite way to reward yourself, you know, after that emotionally <laughs> draining, physically tiring competition? How do you reward yourself? Um, with a hamburger and chips. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what? I'm a sucker for for a, for a hamburger and chips. <laughs> now, Limani just also she also nods her head. So I have a very Choose sweet. Choose the hamburger and chips. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I'm a very I have a very sweet teeth. So I like mm. to tooth. So I eat um, like a chalky or, well, I think sometimes it's just to to take out sometimes or go to the to the bush or unwind, but. I get a big idea, so I'm struggling to sit still <laughs> and not to do anything. So <laughs> that is a bit of a challenge for me, especially in mm -hmm. in an honest taken in the off season because I like to stay mm -hmm. busy and that is mm -hmm. but Limari tells me also so much. She thinks a lot of world athletes or not a lot of athletes are born with I think a little bit of H D D because they have mm -hmm. to have so much to keep going every day, every day, every day. But, ach ja, nie, ek spy makkelijke mense, so ek hou van hamburgers en chippies en a chockey of a sweetie, en dis dit, ja. And tell us, how do you balance everything? Because obviously we know you have a son, you know, you have family, you are 37 years old now, but you're still so consistent, and every year you're consistent or you get better. So how do you balance, you know, the training and eating well and staying fit, staying mm. strong? How do you balance your lifestyle? And I say most your only word is this Roy Wayne. Like great wine. You just get better <laughs> by time. Oh no. You were trying um, very well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. No, um oh, luckily I'm a, I have the privilege to be a parent or a mom to mm. to a teenage boy now. So that changes a bit. Um, it's also very sporty, very, um, yeah, almost look like me over the eye. So Enra is doing well. I think he also has a lot of sports genes, but he has his own journey. I think he likes, he will probably go maybe one day into cricket. Uh, that is what he likes. That is what he enjoys doing. Um, yeah, and then I have a wonderful person in my life, Limari. I met her after the London Olympic Games. Um, mm -hmm. we've been together now almost for 10 years, which I'm, oh. which I'm very proud of. And I love mm -hmm. it to the movie and back. So mm -hmm. uh, almost a month ago, we got married and now I will take her surname as well. Yeah. So I will okay. be known as Filiun Lo, which I'm also very proud about. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, so she's in my life. She's really been my strength of pillar. I must tell you. Um, we have also been through a lot of difficult times, which also mm. hasn't been easy, which I also mm. had to find the strength to come through that. Um, mm. Because I think, luckily, I'm a strong person. And um, mm. you, sometimes you get that uh, a big flag of your family or from Viokal, but that just was the fire 
that was just the driving force behind me. To just to show them, no matter what, I will show you. So, mm-hmm. ach ja, ek is a lekker, ek is a lekker mensie, ek glo so. <laughs> I'm, um, hey, and baie lekker. <laughs> I, die Marie always say, I'm a very nice person to all, oh, lekker mensie om mm-hmm. te play, and I enjoy what I do. I'm, I'm very thankful mm-hmm. for the career that I, that I had so far, but which is not yeah. finished yet. And I mm-hmm. still want to accomplish things. But, um, yeah, in between the hard training, you always, you, uh, as you say, you have to try to find a balance. And being a professional athlete, athlete is not always, you have to be very disciplined because you train mm-hmm. literally five, six days out of the seven days. And mm-hmm. you have to make sacrifices and you have to take care of yourself and to look after your body and, um, yeah, but I'm a privilege to have Limari who, who supports me and who is there for me every day that I can do what I can do. Uh, yeah, so we ons to make full my car by my Annex. Ja, wacht dan voor al wat op my pad is. Ja. Well, congratulations, congratulations to you and and your wife on your your wedding. Wow, and we hope, thank we're you. wishing you everything of of the best. And yeah, was one of the clients. If you, I just wanted to have yeah. her her name. Uh, that has also been a dream of mine, you know, to mm. to be to take a certain name, which I'm very proud of. They, the, mm. Her family has been my strength. They always support yeah. me. Her mom and my dad always phones me before the Boeing 747 <laughs> takes yeah. off. And then her, dad, <laughs> then her dad will say, oh, my kind, bring die gouwe beker. So her dad and her parents are very, very, so her whole family are just lovable. So That's that is beautiful. why it's important. Yeah, so I've been very blessed mm. with her family and her support. Yeah. That's amazing. So, Ned, I could chat to you for hours. I mean, I you have so you. many stories. <laughs> you have so much to share. You have so much to tell us. And it's, it's amazing. It's amazing to hear that, like, no matter what, no matter what you face, no matter what challenges come your way, you know what you want, you know, and you're passionate yeah. about it. And you're not going to give up. It doesn't matter what, what's happening or, or going on in your life. And I know recently... You posted a video and you have a backer buddy campaign running. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, just tell us, tell us um, what what your motivation is behind that. And, you know, speak to brands out there. You don't have to mention any brand names or federation yeah. names, whatever. But just tell us why you started this campaign. Well, um, well, I'm in, in the unfortunate position to have no Olympic contract. Um, I don't mm-hmm. get any financial support from, from Saskok at this stage. Um, I don't have any sponsorship. Nike just told me, sorry, you don't have any Nike contract anymore. Um, so and I've been struggling to find a sponsor. I've been trying all brands um, everywhere to, to get a sponsor. Um, so I really like to, to um, yeah, you know, I don't know. I don't know if you know someone that is there, you know, but would like to sponsor. Um, yeah, this is what you've said. It's moeilijk, jong, you know. Um, I think Saskok has the criteria. I don't know what I have to do to Olympic financing. I don't have. I don't have. I'm, I'm in exactly the same situation was at, that I was before Rio. I also didn't have any financial support. Um, mm. And it's hard to work. You know, if I take my competitors across the world and what they have and what they have to do and what they have to do and what they have to do, yes, it is very young. So, uh, yeah, back up, buddy, I, I started out of, eindelijk I desperate, I think you know, want who come a means that you know, um, you also competed and you travel, you know, you had outgaves, but the main concern for me was my monthly expenses. You have to make a living. And with COVID, last year, you know, we couldn't do a deal with it, which makes it difficult. You can't earn a salary. So, hmm. Yeah, uh, that is this really like, so I had to start a back a body campaign for people who, who believes in me and wants to help me um, to make a, a difference now um, in my in my build up to Tokyo. Mar, mm. I, I fully have faith in my in myself that mm. that will come again um, if I, if I if I get the distances on the board, um, then I will probably receive. A, a sponsorship or funding, but I'm not sure, but this is just the position that I'm currently in, yeah. Well, 
I mean, if anybody is out there listening, Sunet Williams <laughs> is an amazing athlete. Um, whoever's out there, whoever watched this live, please share it so people can can see, you know, what position she's in, and who knows, mm-hmm. someone might want to back her. And I believe you just said it before. Rio, you never had backing, and now Tokyo, the same situation, <laughs> which means we're coming home with a gold medal. We believe in <laughs> So, yeah, everybody, oh, she's an amazing athlete. We back her, so back her as well, please. So, Sunet, it's been amazing chatting to you. Oh, but before so sorry we say about bye, earlier. No, it's okay. I understand, I understand. Mm-hmm. Before we say bye, we play a game, okay? We play a game okay. on, on back your girl. So, I'm going to give you 30 seconds, and in 30 seconds, yeah. you have to name as many female track and field athletes that you know. So when Danielle holds the record at 19, so let's yes. see if you can beat her. Oh, goodness. Okay. Okay. It's time to take this just, knowledge now. Is it, just, is it just South Africans or all over? No, all over the world, but female, female. Okay, okay, I'm going <laughs> You ready? 30 seconds. Yes. And three, two, one. Go. Okay, Kelsey Lee, Barber, Christina Song, um, Kladovic, um, Wee Lui Lui, um, Io, Valerie Adams, Sally Peters, uh, uh, Sally Pearson, um, Io, Jerder, um, Ogger, what is that name? Oh, I know all your names. South Africans! South Africans! South Africans! South Africans! Where are Ricky? Um, Caster? Uh, what is it? Wie is it? Wie is it? Daphne Schippers. Um, who I know? <laughs> who I get here? Can I explain it? I just named all the German friends. <laughs> That's the only ones I know. Oh, here is sorry. I can't do this. It's stupid. But I can't end it off. Yes, if you, if you put okay, me on the spot, I can't even let her. It's well, I can't tell me. But this is not going to let her go, man. This is not going to let her no, that's good to oh, know. Thank but thank you, Bias and Ned. I enjoyed speaking to you. Enjoyed seeing oh, all your you. accolades right. and your medals. Thank you for sharing it with us. And honestly, we honestly wish you the best from Backtrack, from South Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just want to see you achieve your goals. So we're praying for you. And we hope that, you know, you make it to Tokyo firstly and that you achieve your dreams over there. Mm-hmm. And we're wishing you all the best. Oh, thank you for having me. And I can buy like with you for sales. And thank you for the support and thank you for the people for the support and the belief. And I fully believe that I will make South Africa proud once again. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. We can't okay, wait bye to watch you. Bye. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. <laughs> oh, sweet.